Hi, it's Sarah Shaw of Entrepreneur, and I'm really excited to be here with you today for the first of my three videos that are going to totally change the way you do your business. So this first video is about how to overcome all of your fears of being organized, not feel overwhelmed any longer, make more money, and get your products into more stores. So how does that sound? So this is the first of three videos that's leading up to the launch of my first ever boot camp, lovingly called the Biz Control Boot Camp, because my goal for 2014 is to help each and every one of you get more organized and be more successful this year and be able to live the kind of life that you really want to live. So how does that sound? <laughs> I love living my lifestyle and I really want to help you do yours better than you are doing now so that you feel really confident and just love your life as much as I love mine. So this boot camp is going to be given in tiny bite-sized morsels. It's a whole brand new uh, program that I've developed. It's a new format because I know you wear 80 billion hats and that you're you know, in the throes of your daily business. And this is designed to give you teeny little tasks to do every day that you'll for sure be able to fit into what you're doing so that you can move your business to new and improved levels in 2014. So I, without further ado, let's get rolling on today's video and I'll tell you more about the boot camp as we keep going in the series. So today's video, I'm going to give you the number one thing that you need to know so that you can be more organized in your business. This is hands down <laughs> the number one thing that is going to totally form how you do your business and how organized you are as the year progresses. So get ready, drum roll. You really need to look at what the trade show schedule is for your industry. So every industry is different, right? You might be in accessories or, um, baby care, baby products, clothing, women's apparel, men's apparel, um, home decor, gifts. So every different industry has their own trade show schedule. And so buyers are conditioned to buy during those trade show times. You know, they are like, sort of like little robots. Oh, it's a trade show, like great, let's go, it's time to buy there. And equally, if they're not attending the trade show, they're expecting for their vendors and for any new vendors to contact them during that trade show period, you know, whether it's a week or two and a few weeks on either side is really when they're looking for new product. You know, when I first had my handbag company, I thought, oh yeah, you know, whatever, people are buying all the time and I was completely unorganized. I never knew when, you know, when anyone was looking for something, it never occurred to me in a million years to look at the trade show schedule. I didn't even really know what trade shows were, to be honest. Um, and, you know, I knew that there were market weeks because I had my office downtown Los Angeles and I could tell that there were things going on at different times, but I didn't really know what was happening for about a good year. And it really was when I figured out that buyers buy during the trade show times that it was, you know, that was when I really needed to have my stuff ready. But then I came to the next set of problems. I didn't know how to stay organized to get my stuff ready to have it to be able to show during the trade show. So it took me a few a few more years. <laughs> you know, everything was slow learning process for me back then. And I was just so overwhelmed by everything else that I needed to do in my business that it never occurred to me to actually sit down and realize you know, oh, if I just organize my time and my schedule, that everything's going to flow more easily. So what, kind of when the light bulb went off, you know, I really sat down and I thought, how can I best organize myself so that when the trade shows are happening, and the, even if I'm not attending it, but if the buyers are ready to buy, let's say on January 5th, how am I going to have my product ready on time when I don't even know how long any of it takes or when I should start or any of that kind of stuff? So this is my tip. What I did was I devised a plan where I looked at all the trade show dates that were happening for my, you know, for the, in the accessory world, because I was a handbag designer, and I had three times a year that I had to be ready, January, May, and August. And so I had different seasons that I was selling at each of those shows, like I'm sure you probably do too when you're looking at your trade show schedule. You know, even some may have two or three, some may even have five. It just depends on your industry. So you just want to make sure that you write down all of the shows that you could possibly attend during the year that are appropriate to your industry. So once you've done that, then you want to say to yourself, okay, well, how much time do I need? You know, everyone's different. You might be at home making jewelry by yourself, in which case, 
you know, it may only take you two weeks to get ready. I was always really jealous of people who made jewelry because they would just show up at a show with like a tiny little, you know, like box full of their stuff. And here I had like 80,000 containers filled with my huge handbags and everything. I used to have like box envy. And um, so I digress here. But anyway, so looking at, you know, how much time it takes you to put your collection together, you have to back that out in your calendar. So like for me, for example, when I was doing my handbag line, let's say my January collection, so which was spring. So I usually had to start thinking about that usually in August because I would be getting ready to order. I ordered a lot of leather from Italy. And um, so sometimes if I was getting leather, I had to order it in July because Italy was closed in all the month of August. And so they didn't do any production or ship anything. So if you needed something in your hands, like by September 1st or something at the, you know, like that, you had to order it so that it could ship out on July 31st because then it would you know take a few weeks to get to me and I would have it sometime late August and then I could start doing my samples and testing things so that I could have my my order ready for them as soon as they came back in September so that I could place my order and I've already done all my samples while they were on vacation and I've you know done the yays and the nays and oh gosh what was I smoking kind of thing you know when something turned out to be a disaster because that did happen to me too um, and then you know you take the good ones and you move forward with those and decide that that's going to be your collection so then you have to go to uh, and then you think, okay, well, they're coming back in September, so I've got to have my prototypes done and get ready to place my order so that you can get your fabric in and the leather, whatever you're ordering, in by, let's say, October or something like that. So then you have some time to make your production before the January show. Because my in my particular case, the show was the beginning of January, and we had to ship the end of January. So I didn't really have the luxury of saying, oh, well, I'm just going to see, you know, what people order and then I'm going to make my production and then ship it, you know, like I could for, for fall. Fall was awesome. You know, you go to your show in May, you don't have to ship until August 1st. You have so much time to, you know, gather orders and see really what's selling best for you so that you don't have a lot of leftovers and overstock at the end of the season. But I didn't have that luxury in January. So it was a whole different ball game. But you can see like how you go back to, I had to order my product and my raw materials to make my samples back in July, sometimes even late June. So that's six months before anyone's ever going to see it. So you, you know, so during that whole time, I had to start thinking about, okay, you know, what am I going to make? What else am I doing? You know, now that I've got my leather goods coming in, am I making some other kind of fabric bags or, you know, who knew what I was doing? <laughs> I sometimes didn't know what I was doing. And then, you know, then thinking about, okay, once you've got your samples all set, then you, you got to set your um, photography session. And when are you going to write the content and the descriptions and get it on your website and do all the different things and get your catalogs ready and all the different pieces that go into getting your collection ready to present to the stores and also to sell on your website because that just may be the way you're you're doing your business as well. But one way or the other, someone wants to buy it and you want to sell it to them. So you've got to be ready at the right time. Obviously, if you're selling just on your website, you're going to be selling a little bit more uh, seasonally than you would be in advance to the stores. But I know that you're probably either wanting to sell to stores or do already. So this is a really good technique so that you can be ready on time. So that, that to me was like the biggest hurdle to overcome in my company. And I hear this from so many people that I work with or just people who email me through my website, you know, asking, how do I get organized? How do I do this? Like I'm always behind the eight ball. I'm always rushing, you know, everything's last minute and I forget about so many things, you know, make yourself a master checklist of all the things that you need to do. You know, once you decide on a certain product and you've, you know, got getting the raw materials together, make yourself a list of all the different items that go into whatever you're making. It might be zippers or, you know, snaps and hooks and eyes and interfacing. And I don't know, all, all kinds of, maybe you need to make some kind of, um, you know, plastic molding thing or something. So there's all kinds of, um, 
little obstacles that could get in your way if you're not organized and don't do this backwards calendaring, which really totally changed the way that I did my business. I mean, it took me from night, I mean, literally night to day um, in a couple of days when I started to do this system because it really gave me a sense of organization. And I realized without organization, it's you know impossible like you think about your own life you know you probably are really organized in your life and know you know if you have children when they're you know going on you know their next uh, you know camping trip or something with school or you know or have whenever their next holiday is or something like that and you know you know when your doctor's appointments are or different things or if you have a significant other when they're traveling or when they're home from business or whatever you know what time you guys eat dinner every night I mean all those kinds of things are sort of inherent organizational skills that women have and that we do on an everyday basis but when it comes to organizing your business somehow like all that stuff just like flies out the window like you've never been organized about anything before in your life or at least that's how it was always for me and so being able to take a look at the trade show schedules and then count backwards to see when you need to start doing things so that you can be more organized and just be more relaxed about it because then every day when you look at your calendar you're going to say oh i'm supposed to be doing this today and once you have that you know the most important thing in there which is getting your products ready then you can go and fill in with all the other stuff that you need to do in your business you know maybe you like to write all your blogs one day a week or something and post them you know and schedule them out for the month or something like that but this um, having this calendar will, will give you that freedom and the opportunity to be able to fill in on the days where let's just say you've just ordered all of your raw materials and you're just waiting for them to come and you've got three weeks with kind of nothing to do in a sense, you know? And sometimes I'd be like, woo, I'm just gonna go off and do something fun or, you know, take a vacation for three or four days until, you know, the the stuff gets here and, you know, every all hell breaks loose. And so, you, you know, now I would take a look at that and I would say, oh, okay, well, I have three days here where I could go on vacation or I could, you know, write all my blog posts for the next two months, schedule some social media stuff, get some emails set up to stores, start working on those campaigns and start to get ahead and then take my vacation for a few days, clear my brain, and then come back to, re to doing all of this again and continuing with that while you've got this three week period, you know, for example, where your, prod where your raw materials may be in transit or getting to you from wherever or cr being created or manufactured or whatever the situation is, so that you can really take advantage and get ahead as much as possible. You know, it's like when you get on the plane. When I get on an airplane, I don't just sit there and read a magazine. Okay, sometimes I do. But if it's a long flight, I usually try to do find something that I can do to get ahead with my business, whether it's writing a blog post. You don't need internet for that. I mean, not every single plane on the planet has internet capabilities, or maybe you just don't wanna go online because you don't wanna get sucked into answering emails or something, and that's totally understandable. Sometimes I just like like to use my Microsoft Word or whatever program you write in and just write stuff and get things done or make lists or design something new or sketch something or whatever you like to do so that you feel productive. And if reading a magazine or watching the movie on the plane is how you're going to rejuvenate yourself, then totally do that too. It's just trying to take, what I'm trying to show you is how you can take advantage in your calendar and show yourself what you should be doing every day. Set yourself a little reminder, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, whatever you need, so that your phone or your calendar beeps at you and it's like, hey, you know, mine just is like, oh, huh, time to go pick up your kids from school or time to do this or, you know, go to the grocery store. Yes, I do put go to the grocery store in there because sometimes if I don't, we might starve to death. Um, so it's, it's all the little things that you have to do to make your life run the way you want it to run. And, and so you can be really happy and enjoy yourself. So... Your homework is to go online, research the trade shows that are correct for your industry, write down all of the, of the major shows that are throughout the year, and so that you'll know when you should be selling to people and when they are most ready to buy from you and most prepared to you know whip out their checkbook and that it seems normal to them and that you're not coming at them from some random time 
um, of year that's not you know that they're not accustomed to and then the second part of your homework is to go back in your calendar and take a look at how long your production cycle is and what you when you have to start thinking about designing and ordering and prototyping and then man, man, you know ordering for manufacturing manufacturing photos um, creating your line sheets writing all the content and getting it all up on your website and then starting to prepare the emails that you can send out to stores. So all of this will seem so much more, it'll seem easier to you, I think, once you've got it all into your calendar because it's not gonna be crunched into this like tiny little, you know, three week cycle like I used to do to myself all the time. I mean, literally it would be like, November sometimes and I'd be like oh my god I totally forgot to you know finish the rest of my spring collection because I've ordered all this leather you know back in June and I forgot about the rest of it and you know or sometimes I would just completely forget that you know it come January I had to start thinking about May for my fall collection and I was just in the throes of selling spring and really you know getting into it and looking forward to spring and my brain just couldn't wrap around fall because I didn't have it in my calendar and I didn't have, you know, my little alarm telling me it was ch time to start designing and looking towards the future. So I, instead of looking towards the future, I was always looking to the next day. And in, in a product-based business or really any kind of business, you have to plan and be looking at where you're gonna be three weeks down the line, four weeks down the line, and really understanding what it takes to get to all of those places. So I hope this video was helpful and that you're you know, about to get online and start researching so that you can make your business run more smoothly. And I'll see you on the next video in another week. So have a great week. And until then, when in doubt, take the next step.